According to Richard Feynman, an American theoretical physicist, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself. And you are the easiest person to fool. Today on Growing Hope, we will uncover the truth of how you can't trick yourself forever. It's time for Growing Hope, the show determined to grow up hearts open to pursue the extraordinary. Because you are extraordinary! And now, live from a little cabin in the woods, nestled along Big Spring Creek, it's your host, Catherine Lang. Living bold and living in purpose means standing firm even when the ground moves beneath you. And the ground has been known to move beneath you. Standing firm requires balance, and balance starts with admitting the truth. See, if you're standing on slipping ground like sand or gravel or mud, and you refuse to acknowledge the truth of your circumstances or your surroundings, then you'll eventually fall every single time. <laughs> If you've ever tried walking up a hill of sand, you understand what I'm describing. It's even worse if you're wearing flip-flops, because even when you think you have your footing, your footwear doesn't cooperate. <laughs> if you do get your footwear to cooperate, then the sand underneath you gives way. Or, or maybe you can imagine walking up a pile of gravel, you know, in sandals. <laughs> that would be way worse for me, because you have to... Not only try to keep your balance on that slipping gravel, but find your focus so that you keep your balance while all those little teeny pieces of gravel slip in between your toes and between the sole of your foot and your shoe. And ugh, it's just not good. Not ever good. <laughs> Without a solid foundation, you're walking up a sand dune in flip-flops or up a gravel in sandals. Whatever it is, it's not good. And if you're fooling yourself about where you are or what you're doing or what you have or what you haven't been doing, then you can't be standing on solid foundation. It's just not possible. I've fooled myself in the past too many times to count. And in some ways, I just don't want to talk about. <laughs> but we'll talk about my garden. That's an example we can discuss. See, when we first moved out to this place, I had really big dreams about an amazing garden I wanted to build, and I had space to make it happen, but we didn't really have the extra funds to invest to make it happen, so instead I invested my sweat equity. Every single day I got out there and I did something to move me in the direction that I wanted, and it all started with a bush hook, and if you've never used a bush hook, <laughs> don't. <laughs> Although you could use a bush hook instead of going to the gym, it works out about the same. So I used a bush hook, I cleared by hand, and then I used a sod cutter for the first time. And then I began to use a tiller, and I pruned, and I learned to root plants, and to seed, and to cross seed. And I shared what I was growing, and I traded to get more blooms. And then it was really starting to take shape until one week when I just didn't do anything. And the grass got a little more aggressive and a little more invasive, but I managed to take care of it. And I reminded myself it was only just one week. And it was for that time. The next time it was only just a month and it wasn't my fault. I had no one to help me. I'd encountered not one, but two yellow jackets nests. And it was important for me to wait until it got colder. <laughs> I didn't want any more yellow jackets. And that was true. It was just that month. But then the next time it was a whole year. You see how the little bits start adding together and not in a good way? The next year I didn't get started in time. So it was, by the time I did get started, it wasn't really cooler. And then it was just too hot. And then, you know, yellow jackets. <laughs> And after all, I couldn't do it all alone, even though it was exactly how I got the garden built in the first place was all alone because I didn't even have kids when I started the garden. And I couldn't force labor in my kids that I didn't have. 
So when you're invested in fooling yourself, one excuse is as good as the next. And I fooled myself to the point I seriously considered when I did get back at my garden, I considered just tearing it all up and starting over. It was that bad. The beautiful blooms that I had enjoyed for so many years were hidden with massive weeds. And I'm talking some of these weeds were like the size of trees. Fooling yourself works that way with a garden or with life. Whatever it is, a little fudge here and a little ignoring there and those little bits add up to something pretty bad. And pretty soon you have more weeds than flower. The only way out of the mess is to make the choice to admit the truth and to quit fooling yourself. You can fool yourself and you can keep fooling yourself, but eventually you're going to run into a wall. When you believe something, you can achieve greatness. And when you believe something, you can also fool yourself into a mess. In other words, the mind is a powerful tool. And how you put it to work will make a difference between whether you're face planting into the sand dune or finding your ways to fly into your possibilities. So today we're talking all about fooling ourselves. You can fool yourself. I've done it. It's actually easier, easier than you might expect. <laughs> or at least it's easier to fool me, myself, than you might expect. Or maybe not. But if you want to live in purpose and on purpose, then you have to stop fooling yourself. There's no way around it. You can only avoid the wall face planning moments when you make the pur purposeful choices. Purposeful choices. To be open. To be honest. You have to admit where you are and what you're doing or admit what you're not doing because sometimes that assessment is way more important than admitting what it is you are doing. Back after my husband and I first got married many, many years ago, <laughs> I was taking care of the financial needs and not paying all the bills because we both worked, but I, I was the one that actually handled the checkbook and physically wrote out the checks because back then you had to physically write out the checks. I did most of the shopping, usually all the shopping, and I organized everything for tax season. It was my place. Now, during these times when we were first married, we sometimes had way more bills than we had income to pay them. I learned uh, which bills could be deferred, you know, the longest, which ones could pretty much be ignored. And one season, the juggling got really creative. <laughs> I knew in the back of my mind that my financial house of cards wouldn't last forever, but I was still going on. I was fooling myself into believing that it was working. All was fine and dandy in my deluded little state until one of those bills I had been ignoring came back to haunt me. See, the collector called, my, and, called and threatened my 87-year-old grandmother for non-payment. Turns out my mom had had her co-sign for the student loan that I hadn't been paying. In my defense, I didn't know that my grandmother had co-signed. I couldn't know that the collectors would call her, but it's no excuse because I did know the bill was due. Actually, it was past due. <laughs> so in this case, my ignorance was not bliss for anyone. I'd been fooling myself that the finances were working out even if they weren't at working out perfectly. My choice to fool myself didn't just hurt me. It hurt my grandmother. See, fooling yourself, it'll hurt you, but it's also going to hurt others. So how do you stop fooling yourself? Well, first you have to understand that avoiding the situation will not make it go away. Trust me, ignoring the situation will just create other issues that you're going to have to deal with. <laughs> my husband used to have a geo convertible. I, I say used to because he fooled himself into believing that his car was fine, even though it wasn't, and he lost the car. The Geo convertible was making strange noises. Now, I could hear it when he drove up the driveway, and I pointed it out to him, but he avoided listening to me, avoided talking to me about it, avoided the whole situation with, I, we just don't have the money right now, or I can't take the time off work. And he continued driving the geo convertible with that sound until one day he was driving to work and the car quit working engine just gave out completely i joked that the gerbils had gone on strike <laughs> but he didn't think it was funny he still doesn't think my jokes about his gerbils powering the engine of geo are funny 
I do. <laughs> but maybe I'm fooling myself. But despite my, despite my choking, say, say my husband had fooled himself into uh, believing his car was going to be okay. And although taking the car to the mechanic when it first started acting up wouldn't have guaranteed the car would have continued working, ignoring the uh, noise, definitely avoiding the situation about the noise, avoiding dealing with the noise, definitely set him up for a fall. So avoiding the situation will not make it go away. Second, ignoring the issue leaves the weeds to grow. In other words, things are just going to get worse. We got a shiny new oven when we rebuilt after the tornadoes of 2011. And one day while I was cooking a dish or some other kind of dish, I don't even know what it was, but I know it spilled over into the oven. And the next day I, I ran the self-cleaning cycle and it left a cloud of smoke in the house that just about choked me. So the next time I spilled something, I ignored it. And then when the next spill happened, I ignored it. And then when the kids spilled something, we all ignored it. So flash forward eight years, eight years. That's a lot of spills we ignored. And you can only imagine what the inside of my once shiny oven looked like. It took me three days to clean that oven again. And it turns out the inside was actually a speckled gray and not the black I thought it was. <laughs> I chose to ignore the little spills, and each of those little spills added up to a big mess. It was no longer able to clean it the way it was supposed to be cleaned. I had to invest more to get it done. Ignoring the problems leads to bigger problems. The third thing is putting off the action only makes it more challenging when you finally take action. Plus, putting it off steals energy because you invest energy in putting it off instead of just doing it. I can remember having a plant project in high school. I was supposed to collect different types of plants. And I knew from the beginning of the year that it was going to have to be done, but I put it off. <laughs> Even though I was outside all the time, almost on a daily basis hiking with friends or walking along the lake. But I kept telling myself I'd do the plant project later. And finally, later was there. It was due within a week. And I missed out on a lot of the plants I could have gotten. Plus, I had to steal good night's sleep in order to get things done. And it did get done, but it would have been done easier and less stressfully. And it would have been better if I had not made the choice to put it off. See, putting it off just steals the energy and decreases results. Fourth, giving yourself a pass because of... You fill in your blank. When you give yourself a pass, it never makes things better. It's okay not to do it because I'm short, right? That excuse works for me. Great, because I am short. <laughs> and there are, there are things that I can't easily do because of my height. But it's not true that I can't do them. It's just true that it may be easier for someone else. See, there's always an excuse. You can always give yourself a pass for whatever reason. To not do something, but not doing something, giving yourself that pass doesn't make the circumstances better. And finally, blaming others may ease your guilt, at least for the moment, but it won't get things done either. I know your husband may have told you he would get it done, or I know it may be on your son's chores list, but it may even be the fault of the government. Ultimately, you're the only person in charge of the change for your life. Ultimately, you are the only one that can take the action. Ultimately, you're the only one that can do it. If you want it done, then you have to be willing to take the responsibility to see it done. Nobody else cares as much as you do about your journey. So remember, the first principle is that you must not fool yourself and you are the easiest person to fool. If you want to stop fooling yourself, then you have to start fueling yourself and you're going to have to find a way to quit excusing yourself to make that happen. Does anyone else play trash Tetris in their house? I mean, in my house, it's almost a professional sport. The boys like to see how high they can stack the trash before it all comes crumbling down. 
We all do it. I admit it. I walk past the trash and just kind of stack it up there. But we're just fooling ourselves. The trash isn't going to take itself out. And by the time the stack falls, it's hard to get the trash bag out of the can. It rips the bag. We need a second tr trash bag. If something spills in the can, it has to be washed. It never ends well. We fool ourselves into believing that what we're doing is going to change, make us better, work things out. But we're just fooling ourselves with the trash, with the life, with the garden, with the sand dune and flip-flops. <laughs> it is just holding us back. It might seem easier to settle into the foolishness after all. You don't have to do anything if you're fooling yourself into believing that you don't need to do anything. If you're invested in fooling yourself, then you don't believe you need to be doing anything to get things done or that you're doing all that you can do to get things done or that what you need to do doesn't need to be done right now. I mean, there's 101 ways we can fool ourselves, but the foolishness will cost more when we finally take the step to get real and get done what we know to get done. And you can only fool yourself for so long before you hit that brick wall. The only way to avoid the wall or to get out of the mess if you've waited too long and you've already hit the wall is to stop fooling yourself now. See, now is still the answer. Trust me, it doesn't get any easier or any better. Avoiding the situation won't make it go away. Not balancing the checkbook won't fix the finances. Not stepping on the scales won't make them more susceptible to change. <laughs> Avoiding the problem won't fix the problem. Ignoring the issue only allows the weeds to grow. Piling things up until it all comes tumbling down doesn't clear it out. It only gives you more to clear. Putting off the actions only makes it more of a challenge down the road. Don't believe me? <laughs> Just try leaving one dish in the sink instead of washing it and putting it away or putting it in the dishwasher. See how that works out for you. <laughs> Giving yourself a pass never makes things better, no matter how good the reason or how good the excuse. Someone else may even be better equipped or may have agreed to do it, but ultimately your actions and your change are up to you. And blaming others for the moment it may ease you into feeling better, but it still won't get things done. And it may compound the situation by straining relationships between you and the one that you're blaming. You are always responsible for the choices of your life. The only way to have a balanced life is to be honest about where you are standing and what type of foundation you're standing on. The only way you can get to that point of honesty is to stop making the choice and stop or start making the choice and stop fooling yourself stop making the choices to fool yourself and start making the choices to fuel yourself that's the way you get there thank you so much for joining me for today's growing hope where we are build, building that balanced life you know the one that's going to lead us to the place where we can pursue all of our possibilities i look forward to connecting with you and getting to know more about your journey please feel free to email me anytime at radio at katherinelang.com. And that's K-A-T-H-R-Y-N-L-A-N-G.com. Or you can visit www.snarkyrainbows.com and get a daily dose of encouragement and hope. Until next time, remember, I am Kathy Lang. I am your Rainbows and Lollipops host because every day holds a promise of more and every action contains the power of possibility. It's not about what the world says or even about what the world shows. See, the strength of hope and encouragement will and does push through the limits and the walls of the world. My prayer is and always will be that the words I'm sharing with you are helping you establish your foundation of hope that will shatter the delusions of the world around us. The world is going to try to convince you that you can't. The world is going to tell you that you can't. But you are so much more than the limits the world sets on your life. You can. 
Stop fooling yourself. Start now taking the steps to get there. If you want to live a bold and purposeful life, then do. It is no more complicated than that. If you want to get there, then go. If you want to live your big dream goals, then take that step a little bit at a time and keep adding those little bits up into that positive change that you desire for your life. The more that you are willing to invest in being the unique you and living out your bold purpose, the more you'll, you'll live it. Whether you think you can or whether you think you can't, it's up to you. That's the difference. Remember, until next time, in all that you're doing, find a way to be blessed and find a way to be a blessing. Because the more invested we are in each other, the bolder we can be in, the own, in our own journeys for living out in purpose and on purpose. Thank you for joining us for Growing Hope with Catherine Lang, where we are sharing hope, encouragement, and inspiration to do more. Visit www.catherinelang.com to invite Catherine to be part of your event or to share your own stories of possibility living. Until next time, remember that a seed of hope planted and nurtured will grow up into a world of possibilities.